Greetings, my beautiful lovelies. It's Emmy. Welcome to a special Halloween edition of Emmy Makes Something in the Kitchen. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Japanese style sponge cake because I am going to show you how to also make a no face costume. No face, of course, comes from Studio Ghibli's Spirited Away, one of my most favorite movies. I'm actually not a huge anime buff. I've watched a few and Spirited Away is one of them and it's absolutely wonderfully fantastical and there's lots of references to food. So what's not to love? So No Face is kind of this ghostly figure that has a black cloak and a white mask that is inspired by Japanese No, which is a theatrical performance done with masks. And the sponge cake I'm gonna be making is inspired by the scene where No Face is eating sponge cake at Zabiba's tea party. So if you haven't seen Spirit Away, definitely check it out. If you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The recipe I'm gonna be using today is from Japanese Cooking 101, and I will put a link to their video down in the description down below. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing we're going to do is use our fencing mask and sift our cake flour. This is 90 grams of cake flour. Cake flour is a little bit different than all purpose flour. It has less gluten in it and therefore it makes for a lighter textured cake. So Noriko-san and Yuko-san over at Japanese Cooking 101 say you must sift this twice to ensure that the cake remains nice and light. So I will follow instructions and do that twice. Once twice, three times, later. Next, I'm gonna line my seven inch baking pan with some parchment paper. I like to use a little bit of butter to help the parchment paper stick. If you want the details on how to line a pan like this, you can check out my jiggly cake recipe and it has all the details there. So circle there, and this will ensure that our cake comes out cleanly. Now we're going to take our butter and our milk and combine them and then microwave this until the butter is completely melted. Now in the bowl of a stand mixer, we're going to combine three eggs. I like the fact that we don't have to separate the eggs. We're not dealing with any meringue here. We're just doing three whole eggs and our 90 grams of sugar. We're going to whisk this by hand a little bit just to incorporate. And then over some hot water, we're going to place our eggs and beat this until the sugar is completely dissolved. It's really important that we don't curdle the eggs. So you don't want your water to be at a rolling boil and you don't want the bowl of your mixing bowl to necessarily be in the boiling water because then you'll end up with cooked eggs rather than just dissolved sugar in eggs. Okay, next we're gonna put our stand mixer to work and beat this until it gets really voluminous and light in color and fluffy. This is what's gonna make our sponge cake spongy. All right, here we go. So my mixer's been going for a good 10 minutes or so, I'm just guessing. So yeah, that's what it looks like. Nice and fluffy. Next, I'm gonna add one teaspoon of vanilla and we're gonna add our flour in three increments. Let's go ahead and sift it for good measure. And using a spatula, we're gonna gently fold the flour in. Very gently. Another one third. And finally, we're gonna add our milk and butter mixture. Pour that into our pan. Now we're gonna pop this into a 350 degree oven and cook it for 20 to 25 minutes or until a toothpick comes out nice and clean. So to make this costume, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a large sheet of cardboard, or in my case, I decided to use a white sheet of foam core. I like the fact that I didn't have to paint it and that it was nice and clean and smooth. So you're also gonna need a few yards of black fabric. I just went to my thrift store and found a queen size fitted sheet and it worked perfectly. I like the fitted sheet because the elastic actually made it really simple to place around the mask. You're gonna also need some black gloves, 
And you're also going to need some sort of hat or something to attach the costume to your head. I just borrowed my son's hard hat. And then you're also going to need a bunch of paper or foam or something to kind of bulk up the top part of the costume so no face has a bit of a bulge in the back. You can totally skip that if you don't want to fill out the back of no face, but I thought it looked a little bit more realistic when you had a bit of a hump that went back from behind the mask. You just take your foam core and you draw out your mask. It's a nice oval shape. You can find plenty of pictures online for no face's expression or face that you want. Very, very, so I cut out the mouth using an X-Acto knife. So that will be the place where I can see. So in the mouth, I placed a little bit of black window screening so I could still see out, but then you couldn't necessarily see my eyes looking in. Next, we have to attach the mask to the hard hat. And I just used a bunch of masking tape because this was my son's hard hat after all. I didn't want anything to be permanent. So I just used a lot of masking tape and use some paper to affix the mask to the helmet. And then it was just a matter of bulking up the top of it. After I bulked up the back, then I was ready to cover everything with black fabric. And what I did was I took the long ways of the fitted sheet and I draped it so that the two corners of the mattress kind of went around the mask. And then I stretched and glued using hot glue all the way around the perimeter of the mask, kind of stretching and gluing, stretching and gluing. And then right underneath the chin, I just glued the seam all the way down. So I made like a tube. And then I cut two slits for my arms to come out. Just two slits, didn't have them do anything, just cut two slits. And then I can stick my hand out and then I'm gonna put my gloves on. And that's it, that's the entire no face costume. Super easy, super fun to put together and very dramatic. And if you are a Spirit Away fan, you will love this iconic costume. All right, let's check on the cake. Alrighty, here's my sponge cake. I've let it cool on a wire rack. I removed it from the bottom of the pan. This is a push pan, so I just pushed it from down below and released it from the sides. The parchment paper worked beautifully. Now I'm going to remove the parchment from around the perimeter, which is always very satisfying like that comes off beautifully and there's my perfect little sponge cake look how stinking cute I do have to say I baked this longer than what was suggested it said 20 to 25 minutes I did more like 35 minutes I did increments about three minutes and I had to do that a few times to make sure that the cake was completely cooked all right let's cut into the cake here we go oh do you hear that Beautiful, gorgeous. And look at this perfect slice of cake. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? I am so happy about how this turned out. The cake is fully cooked, nice and tall, nice and yellow from the eggs. Incidentally, this is the same kind of cake that you would use if you were making a Christmas cakey. If you haven't seen that video, I've done a couple of them now, but it's a cake that's traditionally eaten and served during Christmas time. Sponge cake, and then it's layered with whipped cream and topped with strawberries. Totally delicious. But today, I'm just going to have it straight up. All right, let's give it a go. Oh, I love that sound. Can you hear it? Itadakimasu. Mm-hmm. And that is absolutely delicious. Fluffy, light, buttery, and a little kiss of vanilla in there. Delicious. It's like a chiffon cake, but more buttery, but same kind of light and fluffy texture. In terms of flavor, it actually reminds me a lot of the jiggly cheesecake, but it's not as rich. That one had some cream cheese in it, and it just tastes a little bit richer, a little bit more butterier a little bit more like pound cake, a little bit more richer than say an angel food cake, but same amount of sweetness and same kind of fluffy, light egg whippy texture. And actually very, very simple to put together. You just have to make sure you weigh out your ingredients accurately and whip up the eggs really, really, really fluffily. Otherwise you're not gonna have a cake that's nice and light and airy. 
All right, I hope you guys enjoy that one. I hope you guys learned something. Let me know what your plans are for Halloween, if you have plans. If you have costume ideas, I wanna know about them too. If you have a costume already, <laughs> let me see what they look like on social media. I hope you guys have a happy and safe Halloween. Be sure to check out the Halloween playlist. I've been doing Halloween themed videos for years now, so there's quite an archive. Check out the videos there. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. It really helps me out. Follow me on social media so you can keep tabs on what I'm doing. Like this video, subscribe, and I shall see you in the next one. Toodaloo, take care, bye.